Hi boys and girls, I am back with chapter two of Beezus and Ramona by Beverly Cleary, where we left off in the first chapter. Um, Beezus was quite frustrated with Ramona because she felt like she always gets her way. And she had taken her to the library and Ramona had written her name on every page in the book. And so the librarian helped Beezus figure out a way to where Ramona wouldn't necessarily gain ownership of the book. So now we're going to pick it up with chapter two, Beezus and her imagination. Let's get started. Beezus and Ramona both looked forward to Friday afternoons after school. Beezus became Beezus because she attended the art class at the recreation center at the Glenwood Park. Ramona because she was allowed to go to the park with Beezus and play in the sand pile until the class was over. This Friday, while Beezus held Ramona by the hand and waited for the traffic light to change from red to green, she thought how wonderful it would be to have an imagination like Ramona's. Oh, you know, Ramona, her imagination runs away with her, Mother said. When Ramona made up a story about seeing a fire engine crash into a garbage truck, that child has an imagination a mile long, the Quimby's grown-up friends remarked when Ramona sat in the middle of the living room floor with a plastic wading pool she had dragged up from the basement and pretended she was in a boat in the middle of the lake. Did you ever see so much imagination in such a little girl, the neighbors asked one another when Ramona hopped around the yard pretending she was the Easter Bunny. One spring day, Ramona had gotten lost because she started out to find a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The rainbow had appeared at the end of the park until she, until she reached the park, but then it looked as if it ended behind the supermarket when the police brought Ramona home, father said, sometimes I think Ramona has too much imagination. Nobody, reflected Beezus, ever says anything about my imagination. Nobody at all. And she wished, more than anything, that she had imagination. How pleased Miss Robbins, the art teacher, would be with her if she had imagination like Ramona's. Unfortunately, Beezus was not very good at painting, at least not the way Miss Robbins wanted boys and girls to paint. She wanted them to use their imagination and free, feel free. Beezus still squirmed with her embarrassment when she thought of her first painting, a picture of a dog with a bow wow coming out of his mouth in a balloon. Miss Robbins pointed out the way pointed out that only in bunny papers did dogs have Bow Wow coming out of their mouths in balloons. Bow Wow in a balloon was not art. When Miss Robbins did think one of Beezus's paintings was good enough to put up on the wall, she always tacked it way down at the end, never in the center. Beezus wished she could have a painting in the center of the wall. Hurry up, Ramona, Beezus coaxed. Then she noticed that her sister was dragging a string along behind her. Oh, Ramona, she protested, why do you have to bring Ralph with you? Ralph was an imaginary green lizard. Ramona liked to pretend she was leading by a string. I love Ralph, said Ramona firmly, and Ralph likes to go to the park. Beezus knew it was easier to pretend along with Ramona than to make her stop. Anyway, it was better to have her pretend to lead a lizard than to pretend to be a lizard herself. Can you carry him, she suggested. No, said Ramona. He's slimy. When the girls came to the stop shopping district, Ramona had to stop in at the drugstore. There's a picture of her leading her lizard. Ramona had to stop at the drugstore scales and pretend to weigh herself while Beezus held Ralph's string. I weigh 5011 50, pounds, she announced, while Beezus smiled at Ramona's idea of her weight. It just goes to show how much imagination Ramona has, she thought. In the radio and phonograph store, Ramona insisted on petting his master's voice, the black and white plaster dog, 
bigger than Ramona, that always sat with one ear cocked in front of the door. Beezus thought admiringly about the amount of imagination it took to pretend that a scare, scarred and chipped plaster dog was real. If only she had imagination like Ramona's, maybe Miss Robbins would say her paintings were free and imaginative and would tack them in the middle of the wall. When they reached the park, Beezus left Ra Ramona and Ralph in the sand pile and feeling more and more discouraged at her own lack of imagination, hurried to the recreation center. The class had already poured paints into their muffin tins and were painting on paper thumbtacked to the drawing boards. The room hummed with activity. Miss Robbins, wearing the, um, a painting smeared smock, flew from one artist to another, praising, correcting, and suggesting. Beezus waited until Miss Robbins finished explaining to a boy that he should not outline a mouth with black paint. Her mouth wasn't outlined in black, was it? Then Beezus says, I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Robbins. She stared in fascination at Miss Robbins' earrings. They came almost to her shoulders and were made of silver wires twisted and bent into interesting shapes. Not the shape of anything particular, just interesting shapes. That's all right, Miss Robbins. Her earrings swinging and smiled at Beezus. Get your paints and paper. Today, everyone is painting an imaginary animal. An imaginary animal? Beezus repeated blankly. How could she possibly think of an imaginary animal? As Beezus poured paints into her muffin tin and tacked a sheet of paper on her drawing board, she tried to think of an imaginary animal. But all the animals she could think of, cats and dogs, cows and horses, lions, giraffes, were discouragingly real. Reluctantly, Beezus took the only vacant seat, which was beside a boy named R Wayne. He came to the class only because his mother made him. Once, Beezus had hung her sweater on the back of a chair, and Wayne had printed post no bills on it in chalk. Beezus had worn it all the way home before she discovered it. Since then, she did not care to sit beside Wayne. Today, she noticed he had parked a great favorite lollipop on a paper towel beside his muffin tin of paints. Hey, Bees, he greeted her. No fair licking my sucker. I don't want your old sucker, answered Beezus, and don't call me Bees. Okay, Bees, said Wayne. And at that moment, the door opened and Ramona walked into the room. She was still dragging that string behind her, looking angry. Why, hello, said Miss Robbins, pleasantly. Oh, Ramona, you're supposed to be playing in the sand pile, said Beezus, going over to her. No, said Ramona flatly. Howie threw sand on Ralph. Her dark eyes were busy taking in the paints and the brushes. The drawing boards. I'm going to paint, she announced. Mother said you were supposed to play in the sand pile, protested Beezus. You're too little for this class. You say that about everything, complained Ramona. Then she turned to Miss Robbins. Don't step on Ralph, she said. Ralph is a make-believe green lizard she pretends to lead around on a string. Beezus was embarrassed at having to explain such a silly thing. Miss Robbins laughed. Well, here is a little girl with lots of imagination. How would you like to paint a picture of Ralph for us, Ramona? Beezus could not help feeling annoyed. Miss Robbins was letting Ramona stay in the class, the one place where she was never allowed to tag along. Miss Robbins would probably like her painting because it would be so full of imagination. Ramona's pictures, in fact, were so full of imagination, it took even more imagination to tell what they were. Ramona beamed at Miss Robbins, who found a drawing board for her and a stool, and she placed between Beezus and Rain, Wayne. She lifted Ramona onto the stool. There, now you can share your sister's paints, she said. Ramona looked impressed at being allowed to paint with such big boys and girls. She sat quickly on, on her stool, watching everything around her. Maybe she'll behave herself after all, thought Beezus, as she dipped her brush into the blue paint. Now, I don't have to sit next to Wayne. And since Beezus 
Still had not thought of an imaginary animal, she decided to start with the sky. Do the sky first, Beezus whispered to Ramona, who looked at her as if she did not know how to begin. Then Beezus faced her own work, determined to be free and imaginative. To be free on a piece of paper was not as easy as it sounded, she thought. Miss Robbins always said to start with the big areas of a picture, paint them bravely and boldly. So Beezus spread the sky on her paper with bold, brave strokes. Back and forth across the paper, she swept her brush, brave and bold and free. And that was the way to do it. And there they are painting. Her sky turned out to be too wet. So while it dried a little, Beezus looked at what the other boys and girls were doing. Celia, who sat on her left, had already filled in a brave and bold background of pink, which she had sprinkled with big purple dots. Now she was painting a long gray line that wound all over her paper, in and out the dots. What's that supposed to be, whispered Beezus. I'm not sure yet, said Celia. Beezus felt better because Celia was, what, was the kind of girl who knew exactly what she was doing and whose pictures were often tacked in the center of the wall. The boy on the other side of Celia, who always wanted to paint airplanes, was painting what looked like a giraffe made of pieces of machinery, and another boy was painting a thing that had two heads. Beezus looked across Ramona to Wayne. He had not bothered with the sky at all. He had painted a hen. Beezus knew it was a hen because he had printed in big letters, this is a real hen, with an arrow pointing to it. Wayne always tried to do just the opposite of what Miss Robbins wanted. Hey, quit peeking, said Wayne in a loud voice. I'm not peeking, said Beezus, hastily trying to look as if she had been interested in Ramona's paper the whole time. Ramona had dipped her brush into blue paint and had painted the blue stripe across the top of a paper. That's the sky, she said happily. But it's that's not the way the sky is, Beezus was trying to be helpful. She felt better because Ramona was not plunged in and painted a picture full of imagination. Sky should come further down the paper. The sky is up, Ramona said Ramona firmly. Beezus decided she couldn't waste time explaining about skies, not when she still hadn't thought of an imaginary animal. Maybe she could take a real animal of so and sort of change it around. Let's see, she thought. I could take a horse and put feathers on it. No, all those feathers would be too hard to paint. Wings, that was it. A horse with rings was an imaginary animal. A real imaginary animal because Mother had once read a story about a pegasus the winged horse out of a library book. In the story, the Pegasus had been white, which was a real horse color. Beezus decided to be extra imaginative. She would make her horse green, a green horse against a blue sky. Miss Robbins ought to like that. Beezus did not think gr blue and green looked very pretty together, but Miss Robbins often liked colors that Beezus thought did not really go together. Beezus dipped her brush into the green paint outlined the wing against the sky. Next, she outlined the body of the horse with a long tail that hung down below. It was a magnificent horse. At least, Beezus hoped it would look magnificent when she finished. Anyway, it was big because Miss Robbins looked like her artist to cover the whole paper. Quickly and neatly, Beezus filled in the outline of the horse because Miss Robbins, who was looking at Celia's picture, would look at hers next. Somehow, the horse was not exactly what Beezus had in mind, in her mind's eye. But even so, compared to what Celia was painting, a green horse with wings was a really good imaginary animal. Except for a few soggy places in the sky, her work was much neater than Celia's. Beezus waited for Miss Robbins to point this out. Instead, Miss Robbins said, Celia, your picture is a work to be proud of. It's a difficult thing to get to be as free as this. Then Miss Robbins moved to Beezus, her long earring swinging forward as she leaned over the drawing board. Beezus anxiously waited. Maybe her picture wasn't so good after all. If Miss Robbins liked the gray line winding around 
a lot of purple dots, then maybe she wouldn't like a flying horse. Maybe she liked things with no shape at all, like those earrings. You have a good sky, even if it's a little wet, said Miss Robbins. Beezus was disappointed that anybody could have a good sky. And Miss Robbins continued to study the picture. Try to think about how a horse would look if it was really flying. Beezus tried to think. What about the tail, asked Miss Robbins. Would the tail fly out behind instead of hanging down? Especially if the wind blew real high, hard, said Wayne. Can't you make that horse look rounder, asked Miss Robbins. Think about how a horse looks with the sun shining on him. Part of him would be in the shadow. Not that horse, said Wayne. She just copied it off the mobile gas billboard, only she made it green instead of red. I did not, said Beezus indignantly. Then she start, stared at her painting again. Now that Wayne pointed it out, she could see that her horse did look like one of the mobile gas billboards at the server station where her father bought gasoline. He was a, a flat cardboard horse, not a magnificent horse at all. Her horse wasn't even as good as the horse on the billboard, because instead of flying tail, he had a tail that hung down like, like a wet mop. All right, Wayne, said Miss Robbins. I'm sure Beezus did not mean to copy anything from a billboard. No, I didn't, said Beezus mournfully. I was only trying to change a real animal around to make it imaginary. But I just don't have an imagination at all. Why, well, Beezus, of course you have an imagination. Miss Robbins sounded shocked at the idea of anyone not having an imagination. My little sister has lots of imagination said Beezus. Everybody says so. Miss Robin smiled reassuringly. That doesn't mean you don't have any. I think your trouble is that you work too hard. You don't have to be so neat. Why don't you just start another painting and just try to have a good time with your paints? Beezus looked uncertain. It was a nice change to have a grown-up tell her not to be so neat. But she didn't understand how she could paint a good picture unless she worked at it. If only she had some imagination like Ramona. But no, Miss Robin said everybody had imagination. Well, if she had imagination, where was it? Why wasn't it helping her with her imaginary animal? All she could think of was a cardboard horse on the billboard. Beezus glanced at Ramona, who had been surprisingly quiet for a long time, to see how she was coming along with her picture of Ralph. Except for the stripe of sky at the top, Ramona's paper was blank. Now she dipped her brush in the yellow paint, divided the hairs of the brush into three tufts, and pressed them on the paper, leaving the mark for the track of the bird. That's not the way you use a paintbrush, said Beezus. Besides, you're getting paint on your fingers. Look, Ralph's feet marks, exclaimed Ramona, paying no attention to Beezus. You mean... Footprints, corrected Beezus. Now go on and paint the rest of Ralph. Feet marks, said Ramona stubbornly, and making more footprints across the paper. And I can't paint him because he's just pretend. Oh well, thought Beezus. Maybe making footprints isn't good for the brush, but it keeps her quiet. So she dabbled her own brush in green paint and tried to stir up her imagination. She felt a little encouraged because Ramona was having trouble too. Hey, interrupted Wayne in a loud voice. She's licking my sucker. Ramona Beezus was horrified to see Ramona no longer interested in footprints, calmly sucking Wade's great flavored lollipop. Ramona, put that down this instant. You're not supposed to lick other people's suckers. You give me that, Wayne. Wayne made a grab for his lollipop. No, screamed Ramona, trying to hold it out of his reach. I want it. Ramona, give it to him, ordered Beezus. It's all germy. You mean she's getting germs on it, said Wayne. Give it to me. The rest of the class stopped painting to watch. Wayne made another grab for his lollipop. This time he grabbed Ramona by the wrist. Let go of her, said Beezus angrily. Ramona howled as Wayne tried to pry her fingers loose from the lollipop stick. He knocked against his muffin tin, which flipped up into the air, splattering paint all over the table and drawing boards. And the floor, Ramona was splashed with red and yellow paint. Blue and green ran down Wayne's jeans and on his sneakers. 
a pool of brown paint dripped off the floor and off the table and onto the floor. Now see what you did, said Wayne, after he pried his sucker out of Ramona's fist. See what you did, contradicted Beezus, picking up, picking on my little sister like that. She picked up the paper towel and sucker had been resting on and began to wipe down the splatters off Ramona, who continued to howl. Boys and girls, Miss Robbins raised her voice. Let's be quiet. When the room is quiet, I know you are thinking. Lots of people don't know you have to think while you paint. Then she turned to Wayne. All right, Wayne, you may get a damp cloth and wipe the paint up. I'm sorry, Miss Robbins said Beezus. I want the sucker, screamed Ramona. Suddenly, Beezus decided that she had had enough. This art class was one place where Ramona was not supposed to be. She was supposed to play in the sand pile. Mother had said so. She was not supposed to upset the class and spoil everything with one of her tantrums. Beezus made up her mind. She was not, she was going to do something about it. And right now, too, though she didn't know what. Ramona stopped at this instant. Beezus ordered, go out and play in the sand pile where you belong or I'll, I'll, frantically Beezus tried to think of what she could do. And then she had an expiration or I'll tickle you, she finished. And I guess I'll do, I'll have to do, I'll have some imagination after all, she thought triumphantly. Instantly, Ramona stopped crying. She hugged herself and stared at Beezus. Don't tickle, Beezus, she begged. Please don't tickle. Then go out and play in the sand pile, like Mother says you're supposed to do, Be said Beezus. Don't tickle, shrieked Ramona, as she scrambled down from her stool and ran out to the door. Well, thought Beezus, it worked. It really worked. Feeling suddenly lighthearted, she tackled a fresh sheet of paper on her drawing board and sat staring at it. Maybe Ramona didn't have much imagination so much imagination after all if she couldn't draw a picture of an imaginary green lizard well if ramona couldn't paint a picture of ralph she could ramona was not the only one in the family with imagination so there beza seized her brush painted in another sky with the bold free strokes then she dipped her brush in green and started an outline of a lizard on her paper Let's see, what did her lizard look like? She could not remember. It didn't matter much anyway, not for an imaginary animal. She, she had started the lizard with such brave, bold strokes that it took up most of the page, paper and looked more like a dragon. Beezus promptly decided the animal was a dragon. Dragons breathe fire, but she did not have any orange paint. So she was late in starting this picture. So she didn't want to take any time to mix any. So she dipped her brush in the pink paint instead and made flames come out of this dragon's mouth. Only they didn't look like flames. They looked more like sh spun sugar candy. Beezus had once eaten at the circus. And dragons breathing clouds of pink candy were more fun than an ordinary flame breathing dragon. Forgetting everyone around her, Beezus made pink clouds bigger and fluffier. Dragons had pointed things down their backs. So Beezus made rows of spines down their backs. They did not quite look right, so more like slanting sticks than spines. Lollipop sticks, of course. At that, Beezus laughed to herself. Naturally, a dragon that breathed pink spine sugar would have lollipop sticks down its back. Eagerly, she dipped her brush into the red paint and put strawberry lollipops on the sticks. She painted a different flavor on each stick, finishing with grape flavored lollipop like the one Wayne and Ramona had shared. Then she held her drawing board at arm's length. She was pleased with her dragon. It was funny and colorful and really imaginary. Beezus wondered what she should do next. Then she remembered that Miss Robbins often said it was important for an artist to know when to stop painting. Maybe she'd spoil her picture if she'd added anything. No, just one more touch. She dipped her brush in yellow paint and gave the dragon an eye, a lemon drop eye. There, her imaginary animal was finished. By the time it was 4.30 and most of the boys and girls had put away their drawing boards, washed their muffin tins, and several mothers had come for their children and were wandering around the room looking at the paintings. Those who had finished and washed their hands said 
those who are finished, wash your hands, said Miss Robbins, and I mean clean. Then she came to the beezes. Why beezes, she exclaimed. This is a picture to be proud of. I didn't know whether a dragon should have lollipops on his back or not, but they were fun to paint, said Beezus. Of course he can have lollipops down his back. It's a splendid idea. Idea. After all, no one has ever seen a dragon, so no one knows how one should look, said Miss Robbins. T Miss Robbins turned to several of the mothers and said, with admiration in her voice, here's a girl with real imagination. And Beezus smiled mod modestly at her toes while the mothers admired her picture. We'll tuck this one in the center of the wall for next week's classes to see, said Miss Robbins. It was fun to paint, conf confided Beezus, and her face flushed with pleasure. Of course it was, said Miss Robbins, as she carefully placed the picture in the center of the wall. Didn't I tell you before, wor didn't I tell you you worked too hard at painting before? Beezus nodded. That was a wonderful thing about it, she thought, as she scrubbed her hands. There she is. As she scrubbed out her muffin tin as well, her dragon had been fun while her flying horse had been work. She had imagination. Maybe not as much as Ramona, but real imagination just the same. Here's a girl with real imagination, Miss Robinson had said. A girl with real imagination is a girl with real imagination, Beezus thought, as she left the building and ran across the park to the sand pile. Come on, Ramona, it's time to go home, she called to her little sister, who was happily sprinkling sand on a sleeping dog. And let's not forget Ralph, good old Ralph. And that is the end of chapter two. Chapter three is... Ramona and Risby, and we will pick that up in our next video. Bye, boys and girls. See you soon.